Hello, I'm V.V. Price. I'm the editor of New Mexico Mercury. I'm here today with Dorinda Moreno and Sadie Villalpando Williams, who are tearing and heading up um, a wonderful national campaign to have New Mexico's greatest uh, cinematic achievement, the immortal salt of the earth, um, made in Silver City in the 1950s, uh, under lots of pressure from the McCarthy era to be shown around the country in preparation uh, for the 60th anniversary celebration of the film in New Mexico in March of next year. So I'd like to introduce Sadie if I could, and she's going to uh, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about the film. All right. Um, I am Sadie Vialpando Williams. I'm an original New Mexican. I was born in Valdez, New Mexico, oh. which is right outside of Taos. I, so, and I was raised in San Francisco, California. I came there when I was eight. So I have uh, the roots of two trees. I have the roots of the montaña trees of New Mexico. So that gives me the sangre. And then I have the smarts of a street urban dweller. Yeah. So that gives me a unique perspective. Uh, and what I am is a, a truth teller, a truth teller, and a culture watcher. And what I see happening today, is uh, very relevant in this film. So I want to say a little bit about what the themes of the the film are, and the first is about uh, inequality, labor inequality. Uh, when people do the same work, they should get paid the same. Uh, this is also about um, the power of two or more, uh, organizing our labor. When we build unity, when we can organize ourselves and focus on a cause that is relevant to our families and to our future generations, then we're doing the right thing. Absolutely. And then the last and the very most powerful part of this film is the power of women. When women take on the leadership roles, especially Hispanic, Latina, Chicana, Mestizas, we can move mountains. And that is really going to shine in this film. So we're really happy to be able to show that and to talk about it in a way that will make a difference in this country. Because if anything, that's what we got to do right now. It is critical. We're at that junction. I have a business. It's called Building Alliances, naturally, Coalition Coaching. Ooh. I coach organizations and individuals who are leaders, who want to make a difference, who are willing to put their ass on the line in order to make that difference, and it takes a lot of work. But more than that, it takes faith. It takes a belief in that you, what you are doing will make the difference, will change what, what the culture is doing, because that's what's happening right now. We're in a culture war. We're in an actual fight for the future of this country. And if we cannot step up and take the, the rain by, by the throat, really, and just say, no, that is wrong, this is right. So my comadre is Torindo Moreno. She has been tirelessly spearheading and working this to build a national campaign for Salt of the Earth and give due recognition to this film because it deserves it. This film was banned, as you well know, and it also received national recognition uh, in 1992, was inducted into the National Film Registry as the one of the top 100 films that depicted American life. Mm -hmm. But no one has seen the film yeah, because it was banned. And for tw only 12 theaters throughout the country were willing to show this film back in the day. And as a result, many people do not know of this film. So our campaign is to first show the film because it deserves recognition. It deserves to be seen. And more than that, it needs to be talked about. It is an emotional film and an inspiration. So what we want is to use this film to inspire us. Not just to talk, because that's sometimes all we do, but to act. And especially now, because one fact that I just want to put in right now, and it's from California. We just reached 15 million Latinos in California. We are in absolute tie with 15 million Anglos. But the difference is 70% of our 15 million are under 25. Wow. Whereas the 15 million that are Anglos, only 30% of them are under oh, 25. Wow. So what does that say to you? 
we are going to be in a re they're going to we're going to need to be there for them to help them to lead our country to innovate to create and if we're not educated if we're not empowered if we don't have the tools and the knowledge to carry this country forward we're just going to go completely the way of other empires before us so we're here to challenge us all to come together as one family because that's really what we are and do what is right for our families and for the future of our children. That's it. And I want to now get you to meet Dorinda Moreno, the famous Chicana who has inspired us all uh, for many, many years. I just want to thank you, Sadie, uh, for that. It was so inspiring and just revved me up. You know, when I first saw the salt of the earth, Many, many years ago, I did. I felt my heart explode open and a world flood into me. I was so proud to be a human being. And uh, I, was, I was so grateful for the struggle and, and the effort and the torment that everybody went through trying to make this beautiful movie and then to finally have it, have it gel and coalesce and actually be produced, and even though it was hidden and suppressed and oppressed for many, many decades. Now, this whole national celebration is just a total thrill to me. So thank you, Sadie, and I'm so glad I get to meet Dorinda and talk to her a little bit about the film, too. So uh, next year, we're going to be celebrating the 60th anniversary of The Salt of the Earth. Uh, this is going to be in March. Where is it going to be, and what is, okay. what is the celebration going to be like? It's such a beautiful question because it, it, it has so many answers. <laughs> and there's never one answer. That it's, what we, we, we intend to do is to inspire many activities. And the activities don't have to be organized by any one group. People can organize in their communities, in their homes, in their schools, at their workplace, uh, with all the resources that any one individual or community has to, to just show the film talk about the film um, you know instead of having Tupperware parties have salt of the earth parties I mean bring it home because home is where it belongs uh, hopefully the powers that be that own uh, theaters can open it up since you owe us 60 years worth uh, to show the film, show the film everywhere. Uh, we would like to encourage uh, film festivals to honor the film by, by showing the film. We're trying to do a film festival ourselves and we're looking for a venue. We picked uh, uh, we picked March 8th, International Women's Day, because we oh, think good. it's so appropriate yes, of course it is. that yes. women's groups everywhere uh, celebrate it. So if we would like March 8th to have it shown from coast to coast. And what we offer is to be a calendar. You want to list your film in this ever-growing and giving calendar? Call us and we, we will list it. And if you need speakers, there are so many talented authors that have written many books. Uh, there's a great film on the making of Salt of the Earth called Crime to Fit the Punishment. Excellent Ooh, history. It tells you all the in the Hollywood 10, there's the Hollywood 10. That's another uh, film that's available as well. And uh, so we'll, we will have a list of resources, authors, books. We hope that book festivals will, sh uh, will offer those books. We know that educators everywhere will add the film and the books to their reading book lists and offer to the students. Moreover, the students are going to be asking their teachers and be uh, uh, creating events in their cultural centers and that's we're, we're here to support that group. We don't intend to do it all, nor can we. We are uh, so far a volunteer group of people. We've re united the best in New Mexico who've taught in women's classes. Um, uh, Dr. Sofia Martinez here from Albuquerque. At least I think she's almost a doctor. She's going through her PhD program. Uh, Beva Sanchez Padilla, Maria Wellman, Maria Mungia Wellman, uh, Dr. Felipe um, Gasca de Ortego, Dr. Luis Quinones, many people who are scholars and supporters, and, and, and that we all met, uh, most of us, at the 50th anniversary. Some of us were friends way before that. Some of us have been associates for the 40 years of ethnic studies, and that's the backdrop of this entire thing is to 
to support ethnic studies because, you know, in Arizona and all of the um, puppet followers of uh, such as the Tea Party and the Minute men and all of those groups uh, would like to do away with eth ethnic studies. And we're here to say through salt of the earth, you can't take that uh, away. It's not possible. We're strong. We just have to galvanize our civic participation and duties. If you're over 18, register because we need that those votes out there. And so that's what we aim to do is be the inspirational platform, but that it organizes itself because no one needs to be in control of a thing that's too big to manage. People's excitements, as we have seen with the United Farm Workers, as we have seen with other movements, we have all the stuff, we just need to do it. And so we are conduits. I wanted to ask you if you could sort of try to explain to us what is the enduring appeal and power of the salt of the earth? Why is it still so alive and so magnetic and, and so energizing to, to everybody who sees it? And an, an inspiring question, what makes salt of the earth enduring? Mm -hmm. The title really says that all, the people are the salt of the earth. And I don't know if I've ever seen another film that portrays the people who are breathing, living, working, loving, learning together, and they learned to take on uh, the oppressor. They learned, and you take it from all the knowledge of the raiz, of who they are as a people, uh, they're workers, uh, they're people who know struggle, they're, they're people who don't know riches. And what they know is serving their families, uh, serving their husbands, uh, deserving better than what they're getting, yes. and learning to speak out and giving everyone around them that inspiration to struggle together because that's what we have to learn today or relearn it because our people come from struggle they are the salt of the earth they they, they take their knowledge from from the the seeds and the, the plants that they're planting and whether it's working in a mine or or working in a chili patch or you know taking care of the chickens it's like nature is teaching us the lessons of life that we teach together to survive together, it's all complementary. It, if it doesn't work together, and that's, I think, what we need to learn as a movement of men and women and young people and elders learning from each other, keeping those family values that have been parts of hundreds of years of our heritage. And it's in the people, it's in their hearts and it's in their words and it's in how they teach each other. And they brought it to film. And that was an interesting time in history where everything was a gift given by people who maybe didn't know each other, found each other through destiny. Uh, yeah. Grouping of people came to New Mexico because New Mexico has everything to offer. Yeah. It's beauty, it's culture. Uh, you know, you, you, you breathe, the, breathe it in and you're inspired. I mean, this is the land of enchantment. So coming to New Mexico and... Uh, I'll just mention a couple of names. Jenny Vincent, because I'm so proud of Jenny Vincent, uh, was a woman who was calling Hollywood forward. And uh, Herbert Bieberman uh, was introduced to some miners that were having a strike. And all of a sudden, the cameras are pointing at these strikers. And the women are taking over the strike. And so uh, a, a natural act of a a uh, community coming together coincides with Hollywood and and Herbert Bieberman and Paul Jericho coming together mm -hmm. and finding each other out of all of the contradictions in life right. that these people right. found each other in this magical time. Why not in New Mexico? It happened in Silver City. Yes. And in, in Silver City, it's one of my earliest uh, imaginings and remembrances because my father and my cousins all of the men went to work in the mines. All of the women were my mother's comadres. When we showed the film to my father, I was already 19. Um, 
the first time I saw it, and I had heard about it, but it was a mystery. It was something that you hardly talked about. It was communist uh, oh. uh, conspiracy, and you know I'm in San Francisco, and I'm I'm we're living the aftermath of World War II. Right. Uh, we're hearing you know it's it's that whole mystique of World War II, uh, patriotism. But there's a struggle going on in New Mexico with people that are from your people. And I'm hearing in hushed voices about salt of the earth. And all of my red diaper baby friends that all ended up in San Francisco, who were all friends of the Bieberans and all of that group of people, we were discovering the film together. Oh, wonderful. And I went to see it at night, and I said, this is the film that everyone's... I mean, what a shock. Oh, it, it's, it, it, it's so many blessings that come to us that way that are there for... Destiny has put provided you, and it's up to us to connect the dots. And so by the time I got way later after that to uh, San Francisco State and... I was going to bring this film to San Francisco State, to Women's Studies, to La Raza Studies. And a lot of these uh, organizers, these very knowledgeable people that were controversial, that people would talk about, were all the associates of Cesar Chavez, Salalensky, um, uh, Lester Cole. Um, San Francisco was magical in the 60s. All of the movements were coming together. And you bring from your knowledge into, so mine was Native American. Uh, um, I was going to school with Richard uh, Oaks of the Alcatraz wow. uh, uh, occupation, working with Cesar Chavez. About that time I met Sadie. And, uh, and, and, and bringing our, 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 our knowledge together in what was called ethnic studies and bringing salt of the earth at that time and that inspired all of the students and the women's movement people. Uh, I worked with Kay Cole, who was married to Lester Cole, uh, and uh, work with the Women's International League for uh, Peace and Freedom, um, Charles Gary, all names that were very, very important with a resistance, the resistance movement that that grows alongside of all of the movements because you're finding out what your grandparents knew, what the historians and the authors and the writers. I was, I was meeting Gail Sondergaard, right. um, Carrie McWilliams, because we were learning them in the classroom, bringing it, bringing our curriculum development to develop ethnic studies because there was nothing to study until we got there and we had to go to the libraries, dig up the information, bring it forward, teach it in our classes, cart around all those tapes. And if you're lucky enough to get a copy of Salt of the Earth, which was not third world, third world real, I think was where we got Salt of the Earth. When I viewed it, and I'm jumping all over the place because that's the way I talk, but when I viewed it with my father, and he knew everybody in the film. Ah, wonderful. And he got glee with Rosada de Vueltas taking her shoe and knocking the pistol from Will mm. Gear's hand. Um, I was involved in theater. I uh, went to Mexico City, and uh, I meet Rosada de Vueltas. God. Visitor, was deported, her, right? The only actress ever deported for being in the film, and I'm uh, I'm able to meet her twice. Another friend, uh, Marine Dominguez, who grew up in Silver City, was working on doing a film uh, a remake, and so uh, 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 that that was not to be for whatever reasons. But she called forward a big reunion, and I got there. I got the uh, invitation one day, and the film was going to be uh, screened in in Silver City for the first time in umpteen years, probably 40 years, and Rosario de Vueltas was going to be here. It was her first trip mm -hmm. in all that time, and I had to be there, so mm -hmm. I booked a flight, got here, 
I walked in uh, in the dark looking for Marine, and I said, I'm here, I got here. Mm -hmm. And and I have cousins in Silver City. Mm -hmm. So I said, I don't care what time, at three or four in the morning, I will be over. So I ha had a little rendezvous with cousins who still live in Silver City. Mm -hmm. So it's been a thread all of my life. And whether it's in the university or my family or my family extended tree of people, Salt of the earth is always that golden core that, that, that it's hard to find another one of that same caliber. Beautiful. You know, it, I did find another. My father used to talk about, my grandfather used to talk about Pancho Villa. And so for the last seven years of life of Don Ernesto Navavia, knew my grandfather, my mother, all my family, and he lived till 97. He was the last son of Pancho Villa. Wow. And so you have to be feel blessed to put yourself in history's path because people who make history, influence history, have um, an understanding of the society that they're living in, and they 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 are there and you seek them out and if we are um interested concerned engaged uh, human beings in our fellow man uh, we find each other and to me just meeting knowing virginia right before she passed away and taking her to the 50th anniversary of salt of the earth uh, my cousins in uh in Silver City and Baird, sending information over the uh, mail. I got. I have the listing of the 40th anniversary. Oh, wonderful. Now we're doing, we, I was with Virginia on her 50th, and now we're doing the 60th. It's, that's the least we can do. Sure. That is the very, you know, so it's a gift. And either you receive that gift, or you could say, oh, I don't know how, oh, we got social media. <laughs> You know, yeah. there's internet, there's digital magazines. there, And so we find each other through all this maze of apathy, ignorance, and not caring. You will find those people because if you put yourself in that path, which is the, re the work that Sadie and I do, reaching out to the young people because they are there like ben Benito Aragon, who... Um, we're blessed that that he cared enough to respond to the call, and I email blasted everyone in New Mexico whose email I could get, and uh, and it's it there there are a, a lot of um, resources that I have been able to know over the years. Luis Quinones, who wrote the Ballad of uh, of um, uh, Juan Chacon. I wanted to see the ballad of Gregorio Cortez. That's another Can I ballad. Ask you a question yes, question? yes, yes. Uh, so, before. so bringing those people forward and having this tremendous steering committee that we're beginning, but we want to give it back to the people because that's who it belongs to. So, um, I welcome uh, the exchange, and I hope it's ongoing. I hope that we can do this as we follow the the path towards the 60th. We can definitely we do this again, <laughs> yes. many times. I want to get you guys on camera again. Yes. Sure. So one of the things that's always sort of fascinated me about Soul of the Earth is that it was made uh, during a time of tremendous uh, oppression of anybody who thought any way other than a particularly very small slice of political reality. It was made under under uh, the pressure of HUAC, under the pressure of the Red Scare, under the pressure of McCarthyism, and uh, in point of fact, its star, uh, uh, Estrella, was, 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 was deported. Um, what, how did it get to be so, was that pressure, do you think, uh, instrumental in making it such an incredibly powerful movie. I mean, was it sort of like a pressure cooker that made it so powerful, I wonder? It, it's it's really, why are we alive? Uh, you know, uh, to to learn, to take everything, to, you know, to gain experience, to deal with the reality, to confront all the contradictions in the most direct way we know, 
and, and, and to meet whatever problems head on and to de, uh, discern from greed and avarice and uh, bad thinking to what's natural, proper righteousness. And, and, and so you have oppression and you have the corporates and you have the miners and you the, the mining industries and you have American Fruit Company imposing itself on uh, um, centuries of indigenous people who know how to live in their environment in the correct way and in dealing with growing and taking care of their animals and and only taking what they need from life and giving praise to to the creator for what is given to you and you have an imp imposed i mean the colonization was no picnic and even though uh you know riches were supposed to be here waiting for every uh interloper that ever crossed the great big mother ocean to get here with with uh military and arms and so on and so forth to conquer peoples. I mean, we're finally getting over the colonization of 500 years. I mean, that was 1492, 1992, the centenary that we all, as an indigenous continent, reacted against the 500-year consent. So oppressed people are never happy about being oppressed. They're going to, they're going to rally. And Silver City miners and their wives were going to rally against the oppression. That was, we happened to be lucky that there was a wonderful movie and technology there to capture that moment, because it certainly was a gift, and that's it. That's why it's a cornerstone, and that's why it is a classic, because. You can't say, oh, you know, you have to have your documentation. You have to have your proof. Here is our proof. Here, here, here is our ancestors. They're speaking for themselves. And we are confronting the same uh, of contradictions. And But ours is now we have uh, social media, we have technology, and we can catch all the liars in their lies. And we don't have to... Uh, put up with it, agree with it, uh, we can organize against it, and righteousness is going to win out Absolutely. every single time. Excellent. That's just wonderful. I can't wait until March 8th, 2014. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Dorinda, so much for being here with us today. And we hope to have you back closer to the big event. Lots to talk about. Uh, the New Mexico Mercury is honored to have you in its library today. And Pleasure arts and safe journeys and happy trails.